Hey everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. Today we're gonna do a little bit of painting. Actually, I wanna make a lure, but I wanna play around with glow-in-the-dark paints. A little while ago, someone in the comments suggested that I do a tutorial on how to use glow-in-the-dark paints. The truth is, I've never used them. But I had just ordered a bottle of Createx Airbrush glow-in-the-dark paint. And then to add to the serendipity, a company contacted me and asked me to do a product review on what is essentially a UV chamber, an ultraviolet light that you use when you're fishing at night and you're fishing with glow-in-the-dark lures. You gotta charge them up with light to get them to glow in the dark and that's what you'd use this for. So I thought those are three good signs to go ahead and do a video on glow-in-the-dark paints. So we're gonna make a heavy deep water jig and paint it with glow-in-the-dark paints and we'll take that sinking lure I made in the last video with the weight shift and we'll paint that with glow-in-the-dark paints as well. And then we'll play around with this thing and we'll see how well and how quickly this thing will actually charge up that paint and get it to glow. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna make our jig out of a kitchen knife. Now I know this is not a unique idea, but you know when something works, it doesn't have to be your original idea. So what I'm gonna do is cut off the blade a little bit, leave enough of this blade so I can put a couple holes in it and still have room for an eye, and then we'll work out some kind of paint scheme. All right, put some blue tape on the blade just so I can get a visible line on this thing. And I just wanna make a little bit of a contour. Hole drilled there and a hole drilled down here. The lower hole will be where the hooks will hang from and that's where your tie-on eye will be. All right, now I'll shape it on the grind wheel. All right, let's see if I can get a little bit of a polish on this. Not too shabby. Even the cut edge is pretty shiny. All right, that's pretty inspiring. Let's do the whole thing. All right, that's, all right, that's a lot shinier now. This thing will have a nice flash in the water and of course, glow in the dark in the deep. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the finish. It's nice and shiny. I've got it wiped down with alcohol. I don't want to touch it because I'm going to paint it. And holding it through one of the eyes is the only way I can think of actually holding it to paint it without fouling it with my hands. Let's so. go ahead and open up the uh, Createx glow to dark paint and we'll talk a little bit about this phosphorescent stuff. Now just looking at it, I can see that most of the phosphorescence is at the bottom. So this is going to need a lot of shaking. Now that said, you can buy phosphorescent or glow-in-the-dark powdered pigment. It's a super fine powdered pigment that uh, is almost like a fine talc. And the fact that it's really fine makes it really easy to mix with anything from your clear coat to actual paints. You can even add it to your plastisol for soft plastics. So before we get too far along, let's do a couple experiments. All right, so I've got a little piece of PVC that I've cleaned up really well with some acetone. And I wanna go ahead and paint a little bit of black on it just to see what that does as an undercoat. And we'll overlay that with some glow in the dark and see how that interacts. All right, so I painted it in a little bit of a gradient. So it's dark on top and then sort of oversprayed to the sides. And then we'll throw some mesh on there and lay on some glow in the dark paint and see how that looks with the black in the background. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna have to find out about this is whether it's gonna need uh, to be thinned. Createx paints need to be thinned, but this actually looks like it's already thin. So I'm gonna give it a shot without thinning it. And then if we have to thin it, we'll do it.
yeah, it's not flowing well. I'm gonna have to thin it. Before I do that, let me try turning the pressure up on the airbrush. The paint flowed great at 35 PSI, and so I put three coats on it and dried it. So one thing that's obvious right away is that it doesn't have a whole lot of pigment in it. So it doesn't change the color of the white very much. You can barely tell there's anything on there. And on the black, you can just barely see that there's some scale effect on it. To see if it's gonna glow in the dark, we gotta get this thing charged up. But since the sky is clouded over today, I guess it's time to open up that chamber. All right, let's go ahead and unbox this. Now it's essentially a UV light chamber. So I know the first thing that I thought of, and probably you guys, is that can I use this to set my clear coat? And you can't. It doesn't have the right light frequency or even the wattage. Now this is made by a company called Pergear. At least that's the company that contacted me. I looked it up on Amazon and it's also under Very Model. I'm not sure what the hierarchy of companies is, but let's take a look at what it comes with. So it looks like it has a little containing bag that you can store it. There's some Velcro straps so that you can strap it to a post or a railing on your uh, boat. So the depth of the chamber is about nine inches. So you can get an eight to nine inch jig in there. That's pretty good. That's about 20 to 22 centimeters. There's also a magnetic ring right there at the uh, top. It seems like it would capture the hooks, but maybe that's what it is. It keeps the hooks up and out of the way so you get a clear shot of UV without the hooks shadowing the body of the jig. It comes with a charging cord and it's got a 2500 milliamp hour battery in it and it claims to be able to run for 16 hours. That's probably two trips out maybe. At night you'll need to have either some kind of chamber like this or a really good UV flashlight. But the thing with the UV flashlight is that you can only get one side at a time. So this is nice because you get 360 degrees and it has a little sensor that turns it on and leaves it on for 20 seconds. I think that's really cool. It saves battery power and it keeps you from having to use two hands. You can have this thing on your rail and drop a lure down in it, give it the 10 or 15 seconds it needs, and then you can just keep fishing. It also has a drain on the bottom, which is nice because obviously you're going to be dripping salt water down in this thing. But to me, really the most clever part of it is that it can be completely hands-free because at least in my experience, every nighttime fishing trip I've ever been on has been a cluster, has been a series of minor catastrophes and screw up. Everything from running out of gas, getting lost, running aground, getting chased home by giant thunderstorms, you name it. it it's always something at night. And it's nice to have something that isn't going to complicate things anymore. So these guys aren't really sponsoring me or anything. They just asked me to give this thing a review, take a look at it, and show it to my viewer. So I think they're going to offer a discount code. And if they do, I'll put that in the description along with a link to the product itself on Amazon. All right, so let's go ahead and test our paint job in this UV light chamber. We're going to have to find a dark space for this. Probably the upstairs bathroom. There's no window there. All right, we're in a dark space. Let's get this thing and see if we can get it to glow. I have my doubts with that black paint, but we're going to leave it in here for a full 20 seconds and see what happens. Alright, well it glows, but it definitely dies off very quickly. I'm not sure how well the camera captured the amount of glow. It did come out of that chamber really glowing brightly. And while just looking at it like this, you can see a scale pattern, but you can't see one in the glow, so it's not worth doing it. I think it's just best to have a pure glow paint and then something with some contrast. And that's the way I'm going to do both of these paint jobs. So now I need to find a way to paint this uh, knife handle so I can get a nice thick well-coated cover of that glow-in-the-dark paint. And I know from experience that what really matters down there is that there be a lot of contrast in your lure. Some really dark spots and some really bright spots. And that's what the glow-in-the-dark does for you. It turns whatever it's on into the bright part, right? And then anything else is going to be a dark contrast. So I want to have a good heavy glow around the eye and then the center of the eye obviously will be black. And I'll have black along the top edge and then maybe some black spattering along the body. So I'm not going to bore you too much with painting this thing with that glow paint. I'm just going to put a bunch of coats on there, probably five or six, and give it time to dry between them. I'll get back to you when I'm ready to put in whatever little highlight paint we can do. All right, I'm a little bit disappointed on the coverage of the Createx paint. I did end up thinning it. It does say it's a good idea to thin it at 10% with their thinner. So I did it and it does flow a lot better, but still
still the coverage is pretty minimal. I'm not too excited about the Createx paint. It'll work, but you gotta put a lot down. This is about seven or eight coat, and I barely got it to really cover the metal. So maybe it'll work a little better over white. So let's grab the uh, lure I made in the last video and see if we can't make that one look a little better. So what I plan to do is make the head glow in the dark, the tail glow in the dark, and the belly glow in the dark. This way, there'll be two bright spots. And then I'm gonna do kind of a semi-traditional paint job with probably just a black background and silver scales, a little bit of green, and then I'll mist it with the uh, glow in the dark too, just to see if it helps. I'll start off with this glow in the dark. While the glow paint dries on that other lure, let's go ahead and paint the jig. And I'm gonna use this ghost tint blue. It's transparent and pretty subtle. All right, that's a start. Now I'm gonna use this random pattern template uh, just to give it a bunch of speckles and I'm gonna use black. That looks kinda cool. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, that should do with that. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of red down here in the chin before I put the eyes on. All right, time for the eyes. All right, there it is. Now I'm gonna put a clear coat on it, but I really don't have a way to hold it and put it in my turner. So I'm gonna spray it with a clear coat, just a rattle clan clear coat, just to protect the paint a little bit. This Krylon clear glaze, and it's hard enough to protect the paint for a while anyway. It's not as hard as the epoxy, but it'll do in a pinch. All right, in the meantime, this is a perfect time for the question of the week. For those of you who are new to the channel, I try to pick a question every week out of the comments and try to address it really quickly in one of the videos. So this subscriber asked if I would go ahead and go through some of the engineering principles that lie behind hooks that end up getting bent out. So if you've ever done that, you've been fishing, you get a good sized fish and that thing overloads your entire system. Suddenly he's off and you look and he's bent out your hooks. On a good stout hook, the hook will snap. We'll get into the hooks in a second. But first of all, you have to remember your rod, line, drag, and terminal tackle, that's all one system. And that system has to be able to handle the loads you're gonna put on it. And like in a car's suspension, you've got the flexibility of the rod, any flexibility in the line, and your drag system. And that should be what gives way before any of your tackle or line gives way. So consider that first. Take a look at the drag, take a look at the rod you have. Make sure it isn't too stiff a rod. But in the case, that you're sure you need to change hooks, let's take a look at hook shape and how that affects bend out. And a standard round bed hook, whether it's a single hook or part of a treble or double hook, the distance from the line tie and the tip of the hook is key. A round bend hook is gonna be the most likely to bend. A rounded bend tends to distribute the bending load evenly and therefore you don't get a kink bend, you get a, a bend that actually straightens your hook out to the point where the fish is coming off. A better hook geometry is the O'Shaughnessy bend, where you have a gradual decrease in radius and then it quickly turns. And that does two things. One, it brings the load in closer to the tie and eye. And two, it concentrates that load there. So a great deal of load is carried there where it's much more difficult to bend. There's not enough leverage. Now a less common alternative is what uh, that's called a trapper bend or a box bend. And it's a little more radical looking, but I think it's a little better at preventing hook bend. And even better, if it bends some, it still has the angle to hold the fish. Something along those lines. And I'll put a picture up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So what happens here is you end up shortening the distance where the load will actually be placed between here and the eye. And these hard bends are gonna resist a straightening out. They'll bend downwards, but you'll still retain that hook shape to hold onto the fish. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this one. So my goal with this paint job is just to give it sort of a mullet paint job. I want it dark on top, a little bit of a hint of green near the top, and then silver scales. The idea is to put a little bit of scale pattern in there, but not cover up the glow in the dark stuff. So I'm gonna start off with black on top and just slightly down the sides. putting on really rough stripes. These stripes don't matter what they look like now, 
because they're going to end up underneath the scale pattern and then you'll only see them at certain angles of the light. What I like about those stripes under the uh, scales is that they're really subtle. You can only see them at certain angles. So I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a couple of coats of polyacrylic as the mid coat. And then we'll give this thing a UV resin clear coat, at least two of them. While I wait for the clear coats to set, I'm going to go ahead and make up some assist hooks. And I'll dress one of them up with some of this flash. I'm using 150 pound braid to make the bridle for the two hooks. I start off by making a loop with a figure eight knot. I'll be using this marine grade shrink tube. Now I'm just going to do a standard snell on the shank of the hook. And I'll do the same thing with the second hook. Well, it finally got dark out. I think we can go in there, turn off the lights, and do a better test. All right, I'm pretty happy with the paint job on both of these lures. I really like the subtlety of this one. I think it's going to make a great twitch bait out there in the Gulf of Mexico. And I think this thing is pretty cool too. It still has the shine from the steel underneath. And if the glow in the dark is halfway decent, I think it'll be a great lure at night. I'll have to wait till I actually have the patience to actually go out and do another night fishing trip. But let's go ahead and turn off all the lights and then we'll charge up the lures with our UV box and see what happens. And just to see the difference, I also have some soft plastic paddle tail swim baits and I put a hook on one just so I can get it in there, charge it up, and we'll see how much this glows compared to the paint I used on the lures. All right, first we power this up. Let's start off with the little paddle tail first. Wow, that really glows. Look at that thing. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the other lures. All right, let's try the little mullet twitch bait. All right, pretty good shine there, pretty good glow. Look at that belly. And you can really see the contrast. The eye and the tail shines pretty nice. I think that's pretty good. It does sort of die off pretty quick though. All right, let's try this deep water jig and see what happens. I don't really think you need to leave this thing in here for the full 20 seconds, but I'm doing it because I need it to turn off so I can film how well this thing glows. All right, check that out. Pretty nice. It's glowing pretty good still. It's just the camera just doesn't want to pick it up. Look at that. And you can see just a quick shot and you can just throw it back in the water. It really does charge up quickly. Oh yeah, and you can really see the contrast between those little speckles and the eye and everything. That looks pretty cool. Oh yeah, I'm digging it. That's going to be fun to fish with. All right, well, we won't have any water shots with these, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little slideshow at the end of this so you can get a better look at these two lures. All right, so this was a little bit of a different pace, a little bit of a variety of topics, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, and don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you have any questions or any comments, just leave them in the comments. I read all of them. All right, well, that's it for this week. I'll see you all next Friday.